I love Scooby-Doo. I've been a huge fan of Scooby-Doo ever since I was a kid growing up. Now that I'm 23 years old, born in 1996, I still love Scooby-Doo movies and even TV shows to this day. One of my favorite Scooby-Doo movies was Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. The movie came out in 1999 and it was a sequel to Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. What most of you don't know about Witch's Ghost is the fact that it was supposed to be 10 times more darker than Zombie Island. Now, I have happened to see a very dark version of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. It happened sometime last year in 2018, and here's the story on how it all happened. I was on my Xbox One on the Microsoft Store, looking for something to do when I decided to buy something off of the store. I saw a couple of games I liked. There was Fortnite, Halo 5 Guardians, and other games that were for the Xbox One. Then I noticed that Microsoft Store has movies. I have never bought a movie from the Microsoft Store or Xbox One before, so I thought I would give it a shot. I scrolled through the movies uh, through the Microsoft Store and found Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. I sighed that I was having a nostalgic moment. I then noticed that there was a copy of the movie with a different cover. The copy of the movie said, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost 1998. I was confused. How would Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost come out in 1998? But then I remembered that Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost is a sequel to Zombie Island. And when Zombie Island movie was finished, the production of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost started at around sometime in 1998. And then it was released on October 5th, 1999. I bought that movie from the Microsoft Store and it only cost me 10 bucks. That was a very good price, I'll say. I bought the movie and I grabbed my snack from the kitchen, and as I grabbed my snack and my drink, to which it was Pepsi, I got back to my bedroom to watch this weird and interesting 1998 version of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. The cover had Scooby, Shaggy, Velma, Daphne, and Fred, the Hex Girls, and even Ben Ravencroft at the front, with the Witch's Ghost, of course. The movie started with the gang in the museum, solving a mystery, common scenario within every Scooby-Doo movie. The theme song started to play as soon as Shaggy and Scooby were being chased by people wearing masks. As the theme song ended, the gang always wins the mystery of people behind the costumes. A man steps out from his large rug to greet Scooby and the gang. Since they've never seen him before, they had no idea who he was. Velma, however, recognized who this man was. I don't believe it. You're Ben Ravencroft, the famous horror writer, Velma pointed out. That's right, Ben Ravencroft replied, as he walked over to the two officers, holding the two ghosts to which they were people hiding behind masks. And let's see who they are. Ben pulled off the masks of the villains who tried to scare people away. We would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for that meddling writer, one of the men said to Ben. The gang was surprised by this. At least he didn't call us kids, Fred said to Shaggy. Fred said to Shaggy, I hate that, Fred then said. Then he asked Ben Ravencroft on what he was doing in the museum. I'm doing research on my next novel, Ben explained. Then I saw these people acting strange, so I had to find out. Velma then explains to Ben that she's a huge fan of his novels and that she has to read them. I know you, Fred, Daphne, and Shaggy, and Scooby, of course. Ben then also went on talking about that he has heard of mystery ink solving mysteries. Ben then tells Velma that he'll be going back to Massachusetts this weekend and explains that he comes back every fall. He invites the gang to come along. Really? Velma asks with excitement in her tone. We could you sure use a break from solving creepy old mysteries, Daphne added. When Ben mentioned the best foods, Shaggy and Scooby were all excited over food. So far, this beta version of the movie was in great quality. The gang then drove down to a town called Oak Haven, to which is in Massachusetts. When the gang gets to Oak Haven, Ben along with Scooby and the gang were surprised to see that the town square was crazy busy. It looked like something was going on. Ben along with Scooby and the gang had gotten out of their vehicles to see the mayor of Oak Haven. Ben, my boy, I am glad you can come home to see this. Mayor Corey welcomed Ben, along with Scooby and the gang. The mayor also explained that the Autumn Fest was going on in town. Hey Ben, a man in his 
old man's voice was heard. He sounded like he was in his mid to late fifties. Hi, Mr. McKnight, Ben said to the pharmacist. He handed Ben a t-shirt. Welcome home. Have a t-shirt before my store sells out. You can wear it to the concert tomorrow, Mr. McKnight replied. The Hex Girls, Fred added. You've heard of them, Fred? Daphne asked. Fred pointed at the banner that about the concert featuring the Hex Girls. Ben then looked at the t-shirt that he got from Mr. McKnight. The writing on the t-shirt was a bit disturbing. And the shirt I read, and quote, I met the ghost of O'Gaven and died. What the hell, I asked to myself. Why would a t-shirt mention that in a kid's film? Well, I can't argue, as this is the first version of the movie. So I expected more stuff. Velma then starts talking to Ben, saying that there's a ghost in his backyard. It's his own ancestor, the ghost of Sarah Ravencroft, ben, Mayor Corey replied. Then this made Ben really mad. That's stupid, Ben said. I thought we got through with this. Mayor then goes on about explaining about the ghost haunts in the place. The gang replies that they do ghost hunting. The gang was on the tour about how the village from the, ninth, from the 1600s looked like. It was very interesting to see Scooby and the gang interact with certain things of what life was like years ago. The mayor then goes on more about stuff about Sarah being the witch, but Ben defends himself saying that Sarah was a healer and not an evil witch. Scooby was digging near a tree stump and found what seemed to be an old shoe buckle. Shaggy asked Scooby where he found it. I don't know, Scooby replied. The gang then talks about more into the ghost of Sarah Ravencroft, and the mayor explained that her spirit was disturbed when the gown town did construction. You'll see her tonight, the mayor replied. Then Shaggy and Scooby's stomachs started growling. We would like to see a pizza joint. We're starved, Shaggy said as Scooby agreed. Mayor walked Shaggy and Scooby to the restaurant while Velma, Daphne, and Fred went with Ben to his studio. The screen transitions to the restaurant, where Shaggy and Scooby were ordering pretty much anything on the menu of the restaurant. Order anything on the menu, boys, the waiter or owner said as he handed two menus to Shaggy and Scooby. After hearing the food that Jack mentioned, Shaggy and Scooby were drooling. Why, give us two orders of everything. Shaggy said, as the scene then transitions to Ben Ravencroft's studio, where Velma, Daphne, and Fred were looking around. Whose portrait is this? Fred asked. This is Sarah Ravencroft. She's a Wiccan, Ben replied. I think a patient painted her image. Ben then explained to Fred, Daphne, and Velma the history of Sarah Ravencroft of what she did as a Wiccan. She mainly cured patients who could not afford medical treatment. She had a journal that she kept, of all the patients she's cured is written in the book. Wiccans have been accused of witchcraft. In fact, Wiccan comes from Wicca, Velma explained, as Ben was impressed by Velma's smarts. The next scene shows to Shaggy and Scooby eating the food in the restaurant. They were really getting really fat as they usually do when it comes to eating food. How's the food? Daphne asked as Shaggy gulped down his food. Pretty darn good, Shaggy replied as the owner of the restaurant left to go to the market. Fred had an idea. Come on, gang. Let's go see if that ghost is going to make its appearance, Fred said. But Shaggy and Scooby refused. We love to, but we haven't had our dessert yet, Shaggy said. Rah! Scooby replied. The next scene shows the Puritan village, where Velma, Fred, and Daphne and Ben were waiting for the ghost to appear. But after a while of waiting, no ghost showed up. Ben then explains to Velma that he wanted to know where the ghost hit her journal. Boy, Daphne said, Ben's obsessed with that book. Fred then nodded in agreement. We should all leave too, Ben said, but Velma looked at Ben, and then she and the gang didn't want to give up just yet. Give it a chance, Ben, Velma replied, as Fred and Daphne both agreed. The next scene then shows Shaggy and Scooby leaving the restaurant with huge bellies as they were walking down this quiet street area. I was really wondering what this version of the movie was different than the original. Well, sooner or later, I was bound to find out. Scooby and Shaggy then looked in one of the alleyways to see three girls walking towards them. Like, hi, girls, Shaggy said, as he and Scooby both did their best towards the girls. Hi, all three of the girls said. 
They're vampires, and Shaggy and Scooby just lost their mind. They ran down the road for a few minutes, but stopped to catch their breath. But all of a sudden, a fireball was fired at Shaggy and Scooby, followed by an evil laugh coming from a wicked witch. This town shall pay for what they did to me! The wicked witch cackled. She chased Shaggy and Scooby down the road until they bumped into Ben and the gang. What's going on, you guys? Velma asked. Rich's roast, Scooby explained to Velma. You saw the witch's ghost? Velma asked Scooby and Shaggy as he and Shaggy both nodded. Can you show us where you saw her? Fred asked as he heard groaning from Daphne, who he sat on. Can you at least get off of me first, Freddy? Daphne asked as Fred helped Daphne up. Sorry, Daph, Fred replied. As Shaggy and Scooby showed their friends and Ben on what street the witch chased them down on, Fred and Daphne noticed some of the branches. They were in the sets of trees that were broken. They looked to see a straight line across them. Soon the gang could hear rock hard music in the distance. The gang also wonders who could it be. Let's go see, Velma said. As the gang walked through the forest, Shaggy and Scooby, who were hiding in the bushes, moved the bushes around to see a stage where the concert would be held. Hit it, sisters, a voice from the lead singer said as she hissed on screen. Zoinks, Shaggy shrieked. It's the witches! Easy, guys. It's just the Hex Girls, Fred said to Shaggy and Scooby. The Hex Girls were performing one of their songs on screen, and the song was called Hex Girl, and the song was in great quality. After the song had finished, Scooby and Shaggy and the gang clapped for the Hex Girls. They noticed that Scooby and the gang, along with Ben, had been watching them the whole time. Thanks, but what are you doing here? The lead singer asked. She was playing the guitar. The concert's tomorrow, replied one of the backup singers. She played the drums. Wait a minute, said another backup singer. She also played the keyboard. Aren't you Ben Ravencroft? Why? Ben chuckled. You aren't going to bite me, aren't you? Cool. I've always wanted to meet you. The Hex Girls jumped off the stage to meet Scooby and the gang. You're like one of us, the lead singer continued. Yeah, you understand what we're into. One of the backup singers added. Shaggy and Scooby both shrugged. As one of the backup singers turned around, she had blonde hair, wearing green dress with green lipstick. She gave Shaggy and Scooby a creepy smile. It's sort of like, I want to kill you look. Hi, she said. As Shaggy and Scooby both got chills down their spines. So your names are... Fred was then cut off by the lead singer of the Hex Girls. Thorn, Thorn replied, introducing herself. This is Dusk and Luna. We're eco-goths, Forn explained. It's been really nice meeting you all. We gotta get back to our rehearsal. As the gang walked away from the stage, Fred looked at the gang. Those hex girls seem suspicious, Fred said. Velma nodded in agreement. Daph and I should go follow them. Why do you always pair up with Daphne? Velma asked Fred, but he didn't know what to say after Velma asked that question. He blushed at the thought as Ben and... Velma went off to go search the barn after following the tire tracks, while Shaggy and Scooby followed Mayor Cory and Oakhaven. The next scene transitions to Daphne and Fred in the woods. Daphne asks Fred on why he pairs up with her. Fred also began to explain that when he and Daphne heard the Hex Girls walking down the path, they also ended up hiding in the bushes as they watched the Hex Girls walk by. I think we'll have to perform our ritual, girls. Forn said to her girlfriends. Not tonight, Forn, Dusk explained. I'm too tired from practicing, Dusk yawned along with Luna. Me too. How about tomorrow just before the concert, Luna suggested. Fine, I'll do it myself, Forn said. But the thing that her tone of voice sounded different. It sounded like she wanted to hit someone. Fred and Daphne then looked up to see Forn, walking away from her friends. Forn seemed like the leader. Let's follow her. Fred said. Daphne agreed Then I could hear soft crying from Vorn. I could barely hear it though as she was muttering something under her breath but I can't understand what she was saying. The next scene shows Shaggy and Scooby following the mayor and there were close calls on almost being caught. Another scene appears with Velma and Ben inside the barn. The truck's still warm Velma said to Ben and when he asked Velma who could drive it very late at night that's the mystery, 
Velma replied, as the scene then cuts to Foran walking towards what seemed to be her house. She was muttering herself while silently crying. Daphne and Fred followed Foran to her backyard, and when Foran walked inside her shed, Daphne and Fred crouched down to see a window in her shed. It shows Foran inside the shed. She was drying her tears and was doing the ritual. She had a bowl mixing some herbs and stuff. I paused the movie to see something messed up. I happened to see that there was was some sort of the ritual like area. It seemed like she was worshipping something. I was starting to get a bit confused about this beta version of the movie. Like why would they be mentioning of of Satanism? I guess Forn was doing something messed up, but it kinda made me confused. Why did kids movie would have a dark theme like that? I know kids movies will have dark topics, but I didn't expect this. I brushed it off as Daphne and Fred looked at each other. They were confused. Did you see what I saw? Fred asked Daphne. If I didn't know better, I'd say she's a witch, Daphne replied. But what's she doing now? Daphne and Fred watched as Foran inhaled loudly. Then she puts down the, down the bowl and does something really messed up with the candles. Why? Foran said in a whispering voice. Why did we have to do this? Foran began to do the Satan ritual or blood sacrifice. I couldn't understand or un didn't really know what was going on. Is she doing worshipping? Fred asked Daphne. Fred, this is serious, Daphne replied. I don't know if anyone else needs this, but she must be doing a blood sacrifice or something. If we find out more... I'm sure we'll do something, Fred said to Daphne. The next scene that transitions to Shaggy and Scooby, following the mayor for some reason, he disappears and then walks inside the barn. Shaggy and Scooby walked inside the barn when they saw the witch's ghost again. How dare you disturb my resting place, the witch's ghost said in anger. This hell should pay. With that being said, I never expected a kid's movie to have mild swearing but I brushed it off and continued watching. Shaggy and Scooby ran out of the barn, and they ran into the gang again. We follow the mayor inside, Shaggy explained to the gang. They all nodded. Velma then did the gang her experience and gave him of what's going on. Then Fred and Daphne both explained that Foran was doing a blood sacrifice that looked like it was worshipping something. We need, need to see what she's into. Thelma said. But was she with anyone? Nope, Fred replied. She was alone. Daphne and I were going to figure out what's going on, but we decided we'll tell more people if they are aware of it. Where did you see the ghost? Thelma asked. As a screen scene transitions to the barn again, the whole gang were inside the barn. Thelma had gathered the gang and talked into a plan. That's when the next scene shows Shaggy and Scooby, along with Thelma on stage. Scooby started to play the drums, as Shaggy was playing the keyboard. Dusk shows up near the dr dr drums, seeing Scooby playing on them. Hey! She scowled. Sh Scooby stopped what he was doing and hid under the blanket. Why, why don't you stop, old buddy? Shaggy asked, as he stopped playing when Luna tapped on Shaggy from behind. No one ever touches my keyboard, Luna said, as Shaggy chuckled nervously and hides in with Scooby. Thanks for coming, girls. Velma said to the Hex Girls, We should all be having our rest before the concert tomorrow, Forn explained. She did sound like she was tired and rather grouchy. We only came here because Ben asked us to. Hey, Ben called out. I'm just following orders. As the Hex Girls started asking Velma questions, a cool chilling wind blew in the air. As the ghost of witches ghost appeared and started to throw fireballs at them down below. This town shall pay for its foul deed! The witch's ghost screeched. The chase went down until Fred lets go of a tree branch and hits the witch's ghost down into a metal soccer net. Okay, let's see who's behind all this. Fred pulls off the witch's ghost mask to reveal Mr. McKnight. Mr. McKnight? Daphne was surprised. The hex girls walked towards the commotion, where Forn had a look of surprise in her eyes. Daddy? Forn asked as she crouched down to her father's level. Hello, Sally, Mr. McKnight said nervously. Your dad's the ghost? Luna asked Forn. 
Your name is Sally? Fred asked as well. What the hell, Daddy? Fern asked with her father. She did have a tad bit of anger in her voice. Why the hell would you do something like this? Now, swearing doesn't really offend me, and I know it was a rarity, but I let it slide. After all, this is just a weird movie. The gang rounds up the clues to the witch's ghost, and they soon found out why they were doing. They were trying to drag Sarah Ravencroft's name through Ben's nerves, and Ben was pissed off with the mayor and Mr. McKnight. The scene then transitions to the inside of Ben's house. The hex girls were looking at the pictures of Sarah Ravencroft painting. So, was she the real Wiccan? Luna asked. That's right, Ben replied. So cool, Dusk said in amazement. She's beautiful, Forn added. Yes, I think so too, Ben replied as he sighed. And I get so upset when people say she's a witch. I think we owe you girls an apology for thinking you were, well, um... Fred stopped for a moment. Witches, Daphne finished. We saw you performing some sort of ritual in your shed and we... Daphne stopped. We also saw one of your girls doing some sort of blood sacrifice or worshipping. Oh, that? Dusk asked in confusion. What do you mean by worshipping? Well, Daphne showed the hex girls girls what seemed to be a candle. Though we saw this. I've We've been doing worshipping, blood sacrifices for a long time, Forn explained. After my mother died in a tragic car accident. We've been doing what we can do ever since. Why why didn't you wait for us to do the worshipping or something? Luna asked Forn. I... Forn then stopped. I don't know. Forn then just sighed. Luna hugged Forn and then looked at Fred and Daphne. I don't... Thanks for telling us, Dusk said to Fred and Daphne. We're going to... Only do rituals like this when all three of us are together. But however, though, Dusk said, as Foreign Thorn stopped and looked up. About witches, we only pretend that stuff. It's just a gimmick for our band. We're kind of like Wiccans, Luna said. Just ask Foreign, she's one. One. Luna then turned to Foreign. Promise me you'll only do rituals when, when we're all there. I promise, Foreign replied. One sixteenth blood from my mother's side, and what you saw was peppermint and cloves to smooth in my vocal cords. You think it's easy saying this stuff? Forn then chuckled at the end. It's Forn's vape or verbal vaping is awesome, Dusk added. We use it before and after every show. But what about your fangs? Shaggy asked. Now from the movie, I do know very well the, the fangs were fake, but however, that's not the case for this one. The Hex Girls were real vampires. We've been vampires ever since our, well, early teen years, Luna explained. I think it's just some sort of mutation or something. Well, you don't scare us anymore, at least, Shaggy replied. Then Mayor and Mr. McKnight walked in and said to Ben that they were sorry for being a pain in the ass about Sarah Ravencroft. Then Shaggy mentioned the shoe buckle that Scooby found earlier in the movie. Scooby, can you show us exactly where you found this? Velma asked. I ring so. Scooby replied. The scene then fades to the old oak tree, where Scooby and shows the gang where he found the old shoe buckle. Scooby then digs a hole near the oak tree, only to pull out an old box. Ben takes out the box and opened it, and inside the box was an evil book. Ben, Velma said in shock, that's not a journal at all. After that being said, shit started to hit the fan. Because it isn't, Velma. It's a spell book. Ben said evilly, as he portrayed the gang, including the Hex Girls, and even Mayor Corey and Mr. McKnight. Ben opened up the spell book to release Sarah Ravencroft, when Mr. McKnight and the Mayor were running away. Leaving so soon, are we? Ben then pulled out a gun and looked like a revolver, shot at Mr. McKnight. The sound of the gunshot scared the crap out of me, but where did it came from? For that I have no idea where the gun came from to begin with. Mr. McKnight was shot through the shoulder which he fell and cried out in pain. The mayor was shot in the leg, to which he was groaning in pain from it as well. Daddy! Forn shouted, as she and her girls raced to aid her father. Ben all of a sudden used his magic, and the hex girls were all thrown into the air and crashed into a wall, knocking all three of them out. 
Ben then released Sarah Ravencroft's ghost after saying his spell to bring her back to life. Who are you? The ghost asked Ben. Ben Ravencroft. You're descended, Ben said, as he started to have a conversation with Sarah. All of a sudden, they got into an argument. I had no idea what the argument was about, but since the conversation sounded like they were talking in another language, for all I know. So Sarah trapped Ben in the green bubble, and then the gang were all trying to get at the book. Daphne and Fred started to distract Sarah. 400 years, you can't live that long, Fred called out as he and Daphne began to run. That's it, Sarah growled as she summoned two werewolves to chase Fred and Daphne. Velma was being chased by a pumpkin that crashed into a tree. Shaggy and Scooby got the spell book as Sarah turned to the turkey. Kill them, Sarah screamed. Then she transformed the turkey into a hyena and started to run after Shaggy and Scooby. A werewolf jumped on Daphne and started to attack her. Fred noticed Daphne's cries for help and it was trying to keep the beast from attacking her. The werewolf bites into Daphne's arm, causing Daphne to scream in pain. Fred all of a sudden was being attacked by the werewolf as well. Fred screams in terror along with Daphne. Foran then slowly opened her eyes and woke up. She saw Daphne and Fred in danger along with the others. She walked into the battlefield with the werewolves both looked at Foran, Dusk, and Luna, who had also woken up, and they looked at everyone. You want to play rough? Foran growled. Well then, let's play. Foran then lunged at the werewolf and bites one attacking Daphne by the neck. The werewolf groaned in pain as Foran grabbed its fur and the werewolf runs off into the road. She lets go of the werewolf as the truck was driving really fast. The truck hit the werewolf, but we don't see it, thankfully. Luna and Dusk were attacking the other werewolf that was attacking Fred. Foran then bites it, its jaguar in, it, in its neck. The werewolf dry, dies seconds later from blood loss. After Fred and Daphne got free, Shaggy and Scooby were running around with the book, only to not try to have Sarah get at it. Foran, I need you, Thelma said, as she placed her hand on Foran's shoulder. Me? What the heck can I do? Foran asked. You're a Wiccan, Thelma explained. We need you to read the spell. It's the only way to defeat Sarah Ravencroft. Are you f crazy? I told you, I'm not really a witch. Foran replied. I was surprised that the beta movie had some violence in it, as the original film had that, but I know it didn't go that crazy at it. You still have Wiccan blood. You can still read the spell, Velma said. You don't even have the book, Foran replied. Scooby does, Velma replied as Shaggy and Scooby were trying to pass the book to Velma, but Shaggy was being held back by a zombie that jumped on Shaggy. It caused him to drop the book and Scooby took off the book running to Velma. The zombie was luring Shaggy away from the book when he jumped on Shaggy's upper body like the jockey from Left 4 Dead 2 would do. Shoot this thing, Shaggy cried as Foran notices Ben's revolver on the ground. She picks up the revolver and aimed the gun at the zombie. She then shoots the zombie in the head causing him to let Shaggy go. Sarah was now getting mad. I had enough! Sarah screamed as she makes a tree come to life. It grabs Scooby as he throws the book and Daphne catches it. As Daphne was about to run, zombie hands grabbed her legs and Fred went, runs up to her and takes the book, only to have his legs paralyzed. Velma! He tossed the book over to Velma, who caught it and handed the book to Foreign. Quickly, read it, Velma said, as Foran opened the book and began to read the spell. Sarah was so pissed off that she charged at Velma and Foran. Ancient evil, get the deaf, only good can represent. For the misdeeds you have done, which return from what you've become. With Foran's spell being said, all the monsters holding back the gang disappeared. Foran, it's working, Velma said, as the book began to disappear. Sarah was also imprisoned back in the book. Ben Ravencroft was free, but he was stunned. Sarah didn't drag him back in the spell book, book how I would have fought, but Daphne and Velma then burned the spell book. Ben's last book is the one the world will never buy, Velma commented. Thank goodness, Daphne added. Luna along with Dusk assists Mayor Corey, and Forn rushed over to her father's side. He had a bullet wound that went through his shoulder. Daddy, look at me. 
Foran said. We're going to get help. Sally? Mr. McKnight asked his daughter weakly. Yes? Foran asked. She was having tears in her eyes. I'm sorry for not telling you that I was doing worshipping. It's all right, Sarah, Sally. Mr. McKnight said weakly as he coughed. No, Daddy. Me. I don't want to. I don't want to lose you. Sally said as tears were swelled up in her eyes. I'll be okay, Mr. McKnight said. Oh, thank goodness! But you're bleeding. Ford said to her father. She then turned to Ben Ravencroft, pulled out the gun she had earlier. She cocked the safety off and pointed the gun at Ben. Look, I'm really sorry, Ben Cree pleaded, but Sally scowled. Ha, you ain't getting away with that. You almost killed my father, Foran growled as she pointed the gun at Ben's head. Don't you ever come near me, my friends, or family ever again, Foran said as she shot Ben. As a loud gunshot was heard, but we don't see Ben getting shot thankful, Godfrey. Help is on the way, Luna said, as Foran's father was taken to the hospital. The next change transitions to the concert, where the Hex Girls were performing. We could see Foran's father in a bandage on his, on his shoulder. He was enjoying the concert. Scooby, along with the gang, joined in performing the Hex Girls, and then the credits rolled after that. After watching this film, I was amazing. This early version of the movie was better, but you may be asking, why did it not make it to Final Project? Well, there's an answer by reading a review on the Microsoft comments on the store. The review was 5 out of 5 stars, and here's what the review said. This version of the movie was awesome, even though it did mention dark topics, such as worshipping and violence. Ben Ravencroft was going to own the gun in the final project, but they took the gun and other dark themes away, just for the sake of not wanting to scare anyone. But after reading that comment... I scrolled through to see if there was any more, but there weren't any more comments, so I found out the real reason. This beta version of the movie was too dark for kids, and it's why Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost didn't come out in 1998. I still have the movie on Microsoft Store, but due to copyright reasons from Warner Bros. and etc., I can't upload this beta movie on YouTube or other video sharing websites. If you want to see this beta version of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, I don't think it'll be a best idea if I let you see it. But if you want to, you can go look it up right now. It's on the Microsoft Store for anyone who wants to see it.